Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today I'm going to do a video on exponents, all the rules of exponents, some practice problems of exponents, basically anything you would need to take a test that will have exponents in it. Uh, it'll be a great video to watch and practice problems for the ASVAB military placement exam, both mathematical knowledge and arithmetic reasoning, any other standardized math exam, union entrance exam, and also good prep for high school math, algebra, algebra two, pre-calc, any of those classes. The only way to learn anything like juggling is to practice. So the only way to learn math is to practice. I'd have a notebook out in front of you with a pencil out. I would take some notes, pause the video, take some more notes. And then when I'm doing the sample problems, pause the video, do the problems before I do them, unpause the video and see how I did them. So this video is going to be a little different than my previous videos. I'm not just rolling through the test, a practice test. I'm actually going to go over what exponent rules are first. And then we'll look at some sample problems and then some standardized test uh, exponent problems. All right, let's go ahead and start with the rules of exponents. And actually, before we roll through these six rules of exponents, let me just talk about what an exponent is. If I have something like this, this is called my base and then this is my exponent. It means it times itself. So five squared is the same thing as five times five or 25. The reverse of a square is a square root. Again, this is my base, this is my exponent. So the product rule, product means to multiply. I have to have the same bases. If I have x to the m times x to the n, the bases are the same, the exponents are different. That is going to be equal to that same base, and then I add those exponents. So that's a product rule of exponents. If the bases are the same and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Quotient, quotient means to divide. So if I have x to the m divided by x to the n, I subtract the exponents that is equal to the same base of x, and then I have m minus n. The power rule is to a power, so if I have x to the m, the whole thing in parentheses, to the power of n, then that, I multiply these, this is x to the m times n. The zero exponent rule, this is an important one to note as you're canceling and cleaning things up. Anything to the zero power is equal to one. So it might not seem like it, but if I had five to the zero, that's equal to one. X to the zero is equal to one. The negative exponent rule is you could always make that exponent positive by reciprocating it. So if I have X to the negative M, that is going to be equal to 1 over x to the m. The opposite of that is true, too. If I had 1 over x to the negative m, I can make that positive by reciprocating it and moving it up. And lastly, the fractional exponent rule goes to these square roots. So the fractional exponent rule is if I have the square root of 4, there are no numbers written on here. It's implied this is a 1, this is a 2. It is a square root, so it's a 2. This is equal to 4 to the 1 half. So the square root of 4 is the same thing as 4 to the 1 half, or just equal to plus or minus 2. So that leads us to the um, fractional exponent rule. If I have x here, this to the power of n this is the mth root, then this is equal to x to the n over m. So this is a little trickier one, uh, but you could go back and forth between roots, whether it's a square root, third root, fourth root, and powers in here by creating fractional exponents. So those are our rules of exponents. Okay, here are some examples uh, of these rules. We'll look at the first three, then the next three. The product rule, first thing I do is I check my bases are the same. I recognize I am multiplying. So this should be equal to x to the, hopefully you filled in 9, 
where I add the two together. Right here on number two, I see right away I'm dividing, so I know I'm using the quotient rule. I check the bases are the same, and then I know this is going to be equal to 7 minus 2, or x to the fifth. Right here, I have a quantity to a power, so this is going to be multiplication. I distribute that 2 to get x to the 14th. Again, hopefully you're either yelling that out before I answer it, or you're pausing the video and jotting it down. Okay, then the other three rules of exponents, the zero exponent rule. If I have x to the zero, that's going to be equal to 1. If I have 5 to the zero, that's going to be equal to 1. If I have x to the negative fifth, that's going to be equal to 1 over x to the fifth. Or if I had, say, 1 over 5 to the negative 2, that's going to be equal to 5 to the positive 2, or 25. Fractional exponent rule, if I had the third root of 7 squared, that's going to be equal to 7 to the 2 thirds power. Or if I had x to the 1 half power, that would be equal to the square root of x. So going back and forth from fractional exponents to roots, or roots to fractional exponents. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try these here. On the product rule, simplify this. That's multiplication. Hopefully you got x to the eighth. Right here, the quotient rule, y to the seventh divided by y to the two. Hopefully you're getting y to the fifth. On the power rule, scroll up here, a to the twelfth. 9 to the 0 is equal to 1. Negative exponent rule, this should be equal to z 1 over z to the 4th. This is the equivalent. Well, this right here is saying 1 over 5 to the negative 2. The equivalent is just 5 squared to 25. Power over product rule. This is an important thing I didn't mention earlier. That 3 applies to every value in those parentheses. So this is equal to 2 to the 3rd times b to the third. 2 to the third is 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8. So this is simplified as 8b to the third. Some fractional exponent rules, 16 to the power of 1 half. That's going to be the same thing as 16 to the power of 1 in the square root of 2, or the square root of 16, which is 4, plus or minus 4. 8 to the 2 thirds. That's going to be equal, right here, to 8. Remember, this goes here, and this goes here, right? So I have 8 to the 2 thirds. I could square that and say 8 squared is 64. I'm looking for the cube root of 64. I'm saying what times itself times itself is going to give me 64. It's a little tricky one. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4. 64. So the cube root of 64 is just equal to 4. Right here, I'm combining some of those rules. Let me rewrite this first. This is x squared y to the third to the power of 4, all divided by x y to the fifth. That 5 is only applying to that y. I got to use my distribu distribution here, so I got to distribute that through the whole thing to get x to the eighth y to the 12th over x, y to the 5th. This is x to the 1st. Now i got to use my quotient rule, subtraction. 4 minus 1, same base, is x to the 3rd. 12 minus 5 is y to the 7th. Down here, I have 4a to the negative 2. I could just go right to that, put it to the second in the bottom here, times b, so that's going to look like that. That whole thing is divided by this fraction here, 2a, b to the negative 3 is b to the third. 
A couple ways to do this one. This is one of many. But that negative exponent puts it down here. The way I divide fractions, multiply by the reciprocal. So I have 4b over a squared times this thing flipped over, b to the third, 2a. These are all being multiplied together. So this is a to the first. I have that 4 and that 2. That's going to cancel and give me a 2 in the numerator. b1 times b to the third, b to the fourth. And the denominator, a squared times a to the first, will be a to the third. Another way you could do that same problem is, let me go over here and do it. Same thing, but if I had 4a to the negative 2b all over 2, 2ab to the negative 3, 4 and 2 will cancel down to a 2. a to the negative 2, this is a to the 1, so I have negative 2 minus 1. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3, so that's going to give me a to the negative 3 in the numerator, or a to the 3 in the denominator. This is b to the 1, 1 minus negative 3. 1 minus negative 3 is 4. That's going to give me b to the fourth. That should be the same solution as this way. Either way will work. All right, just a couple uh, tips to solve, break down the complex problems into simpler problems. That's actually kind of the key to life. You take a pretty complex problem, break it into smaller and smaller problems, solve the pieces, and then put all those pieces together. Pay close attention to order of operations. Remember that that's PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division from left to right, addition, and subtraction from left to right. Remember that negative exponents move the base to the opposite side of the fraction. When you have fractional exponents, remember that denominator is in the root and the numerator is the power. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure you pause the video, do these problems before I do them. These are ASVAB style exponent problems. These are not problems from the exam. These are just problems I came up with that might be similar to ASVAB um, arithmetic reasoning, mathematical knowledge types of problems. Right away I see these two things have the same base. I am multiplying, so the answer is b x to the 7. Number two, simplify. This is uh, multiplication, so it's going to be y to the 12th, answer b. Here I am dividing the quotient rule. I subtract to get z to the 5th. Number 4, simplify. Anything to 0 power is equal to 1. Correct answer, b. Number 5, I want to move this to the denominator to get 1 over 2 to the third, 2 times 2 times 2, 8. So the correct answer, C, 1 8. Right here, I have to remember to distribute that 3 to the whole quantity. 3 times 3, 9 times 3, 27. 27 A to the sixth. Correct answer, answer D. Number 7. These are starting to get a little more complicated, so I'm going to write these out now. So on number 7, what I want to do is I have x to the 6, y squared, over x squared, y. Quotient rule, I subtract exponents to get x, 6 minus 2 is 4, 2 minus 1 is 1. Correct answer, x to the 4th, y. Number 8, 9 to the 1 half is the same thing as the square root of 9 to the 1 half. Square root, right? The 2 goes in the root, the 1 goes to the power. I know the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Correct answer, answer A right there. Number 9, get a little harder, I have an 8. And then remember that 2, the numerator goes here, and then it is a cube root of that. I think I did this one before. The cube root of 64. 
And hopefully you recognize that as 4 times 4, 16 times 4, 64. Correct answer, answer A. All right, last one. Pause the video, write this one out. Make sure you get it right. 4x to the negative 2, y to the third, over 2x, y to the negative 1. And actually, before I solve this, uh, if you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. Please, if you like this style of video and it's kind of a change for you, uh, comment on it. Rather than me just going through tests, I was thinking a little bit of going over these things, uh, some sample problems, and then a fair bit of repetition before we do some sample ASVAB style problems for multiple choice exams. Okay, uh, 4 over 2, those cancel to give me 2 in the numerator. Negative 2 minus 1 is x to the negative 3. 3 minus negative 1 is to the 4th, so I have 2y to the 4th. All right, thanks again for watching. If you did like the video, I guess if you're here, hopefully you learned something. Like and subscribe. Feel free to share it with anybody trying to master any standardized math exam. Thank you.